did you at all get him to draw a map of Sakoa Shores for you to kind of explain what he was doing? Uh, we used Google Maps, and then I did a rough sketch myself. He didn't do it. Okay. Did, did you draw a map? I drew the, the roads as we're looking at them here, and then I will take marks on which way they went. Okay. Yes, do you have that with you? No, sir. Oh. Did he mark on, or did he just talk to you, and you kind of drew lines and asked him if this was correct? He talked to me, and I drew the lines. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, you did not take him out to the neighborhood to walk it with him or ask him to demonstrate anything to you out in the neighborhood, though, did you? No, sir. Okay. I think when you said you saw Travis back in the headquarters? Yes, sir. Okay. Did not do any interview with him. Just saw that he had come down uh, to be interviewed by Investor Nohill. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And I think you said when you saw him, he was still covered in blood. Yes, sir. Okay. He was just waiting to be interviewed or to be talked to. He had gotten brought in by Officer Lewis, and uh, when we saw how he presented with his clothing and blood. Right. Um, he asked to be able to clean up. Uh, I called Sergeant Oliver and Ms. Gary Lowry, who were down at the scene, and asked them about that. They gave a go ahead, we went and photographed to show the state he was in when he brought up here. Right. And then a lot of them changed. Okay. He was other than otherwise he was just very quiet. Yes, sir. Okay. The one of the photographs that you showed us, I want to put it even a closer one. This right here is an injury to the back of his head. That's after he, let me just rephrase, that's after he's been wiped down with alcohol, is that correct? Um, this is after he's been able to clean up, right. but before I brought the alcohol pad to him at the beginning of Greg and Michael's interview. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what that actually is. I didn't okay. document what, what the mark is. All right. This is all we can say for sure is this is what's left after he's cleaned himself up. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's there on the back of his head. And then here's what's left after he's cleaned himself on his front left arm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, do you have any experience in, with Satilla Shores, the neighborhood itself? Um, from time on patrol, uh, I've answered a few calls in there and then just rode through on occasion. Okay. Have you come to learn the, the makeup of the neighborhood in terms of, you know, like old retirees live there? Uh, Are you aware of those kind of details? I'd be assuming. Oh, okay. We don't want you to do that. So you've not you've not taken it upon yourself to kind of figure out the age of the people or the families or single people versus married people that kind of. Thing. No, sir. I have the experience with the. Uh, um, I've been in there for eight calls. That, okay. that Spillman logs. And so I can, I, I know the demographics on those eight individual houses I've been to, and then this case. But past that, I, I don't know the demographic breakdown, finances, anything like that. So you yourself, you yourself have gone to eight specific calls in that neighborhood. Yes, sir. Over 18, 19, and 20? Since 2015, when we switched over to Spillman system, um, and I can search Spillman. Okay. Spillman that way. So we talk a little bit about this system, but yes. essentially there is a system for Glen County that keeps track of the calls that come in in particular areas, all the way down to the address of yes, the sir. call. Okay. And the call type is something that's determined by the operator that takes the call is that correct uh generally and then it can be changed later so if something's unfounded and it was listed armed robbery but it, it turned out to be a problem with person the officer can change it later okay if if appropriate all right and it's essentially just based on what the citizen says that's calling yes sir okay now one of the things that we started to talk about was you went into 220 Satilla to take a look around at night. Yes, sir. Okay, and because is it fair to say you did that because Greg McMichael was telling you what he believed Mr. Arbery was doing in that residence? Um, yes, sir, and, and overall for the case, but right. Generally, so yes, sir. it's what what 
it, it, by going there, you are looking to determine or to try to understand that somebody may have entered that dwelling with the intent to take something. Um, uh, we're going in to get a picture, get an idea of what the structure is, what's inside of it. So all facets, not just theft, but also, you know, what state is it in? Is there anything obviously stolen? Is there anything obviously not stolen, you know, completely void? We went in for all those reasons. Okay, and, but one of those reasons is to determine if this is a dwelling or a, or a structure that somebody could go in there to steal stuff. Yes, sir. Okay, and the idea is you've been told about break-ins. Yes, sir. That doesn't require something to get broken. You don't have to kick a door or break a window to make a break-in. No, it's, it's commonly used for uh, just entering. going in, entering, yeah. Burglary, don't have to actually steal something, it's just entering with the intent to steal something. Objection at this time. This is the law the court is going to give the jury to ask this officer, or actually to have Mr. Sheffield testify to what the law is and ask this officer to agree with him is inappropriate. Objection inappropriate, I don't think is a legal objection. The reason I'm asking these questions, though, is because he's investigating, and I want to understand the way he's investigating and the decision that he's making. So I'm asking him to help me understand that he's going in there to determine whether or not a burglary or some type of intent to enter the steal. That's all. Okay. Well, it's the relevance of defining, that's really the objection. Well, so, you well, you don't need to argue with me either. So it's actually sustained our relevance. As the court has already instructed the panel a number of times, the law will be given to you from the court. And again, what lawyers say is not testimony or evidence in the case. Couched in those terms, you can ask him what he thinks, but let's not go ahead and define it for him. Okay. So when you're trying to, what are you trying to figure out when you've been told that somebody committed a burglary? objection facts not in evidence nobody's told him that anybody committed a burglary and so therefore especially that day to ask him about this is facts not in evidence and counsel's trying to testify you were told that somebody committed a burglary weren't you I was told he was going in there repeatedly and break-ins was used burglaries was used yeah. for the neighborhood throughout it's solid it's, it's sustained because that's Mr. McMichael's statement and he's already testified that he did not follow up on that. So it's sustained. Okay. You did not follow up to try to determine if a burglary had been committed at 220? Objection. Once again, formal question. On what day? He's already on testified to what he did and you've asked him. It was either you or Mr. Well, I'm so confused here, Judge. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please take a step outside. Mr. Sheffield, yes, sir. you can agree or disagree with this court. That is your prerogative. But to act in the way that you just did in front of this panel, disrespect, I don't care whether you like my rulings or not or you like me or not, but in this court, the Superior Court, it is axiomatic that counsel show at least respect for what the court is doing. And what you just did shows a lack of respect for what the court is trying to do here, which is create an environment which is fair to all parties. I would suggest that you take a moment to think about that. I'm going to step off the bench because I found that, um, I'll just call it rude. All right. Um, I have tolerated a number of things in the courtroom, including, you know, flip charts, writing in the middle of, I mean, the, the jury gets distracted when you were doing the flip charts here, jumping up and moving the boards. 
Um, I would suggest that you temper uh, some of that very quickly um, because it will not be tolerated in this court. And um, I, um, I will leave it at that. I do not need an explanation. I do not need an apology, none of that. But I would suggest that we take a moment and think about the way that you're reacting to the court's uh, instructions and rulings. We're in recess. Thank you.